Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to see how to recreate an effect that is often done with Houdini, but I've never seen a version made with 3ds Max and Phoenix. So I'm going to show you how to do it today. It's a very beautiful paint smear effect. And also there are some very important elements to know and it's not too complicated to create. Of course, the effect is fully available on my Patreon, like all the other projects I create. You can access nearly 200 publications and files, so don't hesitate to check it out. Or if you prefer, you can directly buy the file on Gumroad. Okay guys, let's go. Okay, so now we are in 3ds Max and the first thing we are going to do is to check the unit setup because it will be very important for the final look of our simulation. So here, customize, unit setup, and we can see that we are in centimeter by centimeter. It's perfect like this. Okay, so now I will create a sphere to generate my liquid simulation. So I will create a sphere here, maybe like this. Go above a bit. Okay. I will now create a Phoenix simulation here with the Phoenix liquid simulator. Go to the simulation in grid. 40, 40, 40, okay, and 40 for the z-axis, okay, perfect, go to the view, I think it's good, like this, okay, I can now click on my sphere, and I will convert this sphere into a liquid, so I will go here in Chaos Phoenix Properties, and activate Initial Liquid Fill. I will also go to Object Properties and I don't want to see the mesh, so I will activate Displace Box and Deactivate Renderable. I can now launch the simulation and you can see that we just have the particle and we don't have collision here, so I will select my simulator here. In the first time, I will go here to Preview, Activate Show Mesh, Deactivate the particle and go here in the grid and in the z-axis I will select jammed minus. Okay, I can now relaunch. Perfect. We want the grid to expand during the simulation, so I will go here to adaptive grid and add an extra margin to 4. Perfect. We want to have something with more density, more viscosity, so I will go here in Dynamics and increase the default viscosity to the max value 1. Can I activate here the wetting and increase the sticky liquid to the max value 2. Okay, I know that the strength of the surface tension is between 0.05 and 0.1 for a paint effect, so I will increase a bit the value, so 0.05. For the moment, I think it will be good. I cannot go back to the grid and increase the simulation, maybe to a value of 0.25. Okay. And relaunch the simulation. Okay, so we have something better here. And here you can see the liquid simulation. So maybe the viscosity is too high, so I will go back here in dynamics and decrease the default viscosity. Maybe 0.05. Relaunch. Okay, I think it's better, but we have something very strange that happened here. You can see. Oops. You can see here. So to fix that, it's very easy. I will just increase the step per frame here. I think for this effect, a step per frame to a value of 3 will be enough. So, value of 3 here, and I can now relaunch. Okay, I think it's good like this. So, we have here our paint effect. Now, what we want to do is to create the paint smear. So, to do that, I will create a box that will simulate the brush effect. I will go here, standard primitive. And I recreate a box. Small box like this. Okay, I think it's good. And now we'll try to create something that will simulate a brush effect. So I will increase the number of segments. I can now 
add the noise and I will just increase the strength for the Z value. So value of 3, activate fractal and I will not decrease the scale and you can see here very cool effect here. Okay, I can add a turbo smooth if I want. Yes, okay, I think it's cool. Now what we want to do is to animate this brush from this position here to a position far away, maybe here. So for the moment, just play a bit with the rotation. Okay. Activate the auto key, go to the frame, maybe 80. And move my brush to this position right here. Okay, I can switch to the front view. You can see here the animation and I will also play with the rotation. Okay. Great. I will maybe up a bit the brush because I don't want to have collision in this area here. Okay. I can now go to object property. Don't want to render this element, so I will deactivate also renderable. Okay. I can now launch the simulation. So we have here the paint effect. Okay, so it's a good start, but as you can see here, the effect is very too liquid and the paint smear is very short and we want to have a very long effect. So to fix that, it's very easy. I will show you how to do that. So go back here. I will just delete the simulation. And to have a very, very long simulation, what we have to do is just play with the time scale. So here we go here, select my Phoenix simulator, go to dynamics again, and you can see here the time scale value here. So the value here is to one, and I will decrease the value just for the moment, set a key, and decrease the value to a very low value, maybe I think 0.1. Okay, so you can see here, no, it's not the right key, this key here, so here, time scale to 1, and after here, time scale to 0 0.1. I don't set the time scale to 0 0.1 here because it will affect the look of the paint in the first place. So I want the effect to be activated at, the, at this time here. Okay, so I can now relaunch the simulation. So I have here my paint effect and I switch to a value to 0.1 here. And as you can see, it's already better like this. It's very cool. Of course, it's not yet perfect. It's the first simulation, but we will try to do something better. What I can do is to increase a bit the viscosity, 0.7. I think it should be better. I will now go back here to the grid and increase the resolution, 0.25. And what I love to do is to play with the scale of the brush to create something very more natural at the end. So I will just go to the last keyframe here go to front view activate the auto key and set the brush here in the zero axis and play a bit with the scale i will just decrease the scale in the y axis like this i can go back to my perspective view and we will see the animation will be like this okay so i can now just relaunch the simulation and we will see what we have
Okay, I think I will stop here. As you can see, we have again strange effect here, but the result is already very cool. Let's see. Yeah, it's very good. Okay guys, so it's over for the tutorial. Obviously, this is just the basics of the effect. And if you want to go further, you can find the file on Patreon, like all my other projects, and on Gumroad. Don't hesitate to give me a thumb up and leave a comment if you like my work. And of course, subscribe to be notified of each new video release. Okay guys, see you very soon for a new tutorial. Bye.